In this video, we're going to look at the mid-ordinate rule. We use the rule to find an approximation to the area under a curve. In previous units, we've looked at an alternative technique, and that was called the trapezium rule. With the trapezium rule, we took the area and we split it up into trapezia of equal width. We went ahead and summed those, and that gave us an approximation to the area under a curve when we didn't have the skills to integrate the function. So if we hadn't learned the technique or we couldn't do it by an analytical method, we found an approximation by using the trapezium rule. The mid-ordinate rule is very similar. This time though, we're going to take rectangles of equal width and split our area up to find an approximation. The mid-ordinate rule will give us a more accurate approximation if the function is less linear as it takes into consideration the curvature of our curve. What I'm going to do is look at a function that we know and I'm going to apply the mid-ordinate rule in a very informal way and then we're going to look at the formula and apply it to a function that we couldn't graph. So let's look at a function that we know. What I'm going to do is look at the area trapped under a curve. And I'm going to look at that now and we're going to go from 1 to 4 and we could pick any function. Let's pick something we know. Let's go for 1 plus x squared. So what I want to do is find the area under the curve now from 1 to 4 of 1 plus x squared. What I'm going to do is consider now three strips. So I'm going to make up now three strips and we're going to find an approximation. Clearly, the more strips I have or the more rectangles, the more accurate my estimate will be. So if I look at this now, what I'm going to do is take the x-axis and I'm going to split this up. So if I start at 1 and end at 4 with three strips, I'll have now the ordinates 1, then I'll have 2, then I'll have 3, and then I'll have 4. So let's go ahead now and draw a quick sketch, and we'll use now a coordinate axis, and this really will be a rough sketch. It will just give us some idea of what's going on there. So here's the curve, 1 plus x squared. It's a standard parabola. We've got now a y-intercept of 0, 1, and it will look something like so. So if we put this one on just here, that's going to be 1, we'll have 2, we'll have 3, and we'll have 4. What I'm going to do now is say that x sub naught, x naught, will be 1. I'm going to say now that x1 will be 2, x3 is going to, sorry, x2 will be equal to 3, and finally x3 is going to be equal to 4. So these are the coordinates, so 1, 2, 3, and 4. What I'm now going to do is build up rectangles. The rectangle height is going to be now the value when I take now x sub half. So what we're looking at is the mid-ordinate. Now if I look at the mid-ordinate between 1 and 2, that is going to be 3 over 2. And I'm going to label this now x sub 1 half. So all I've done is taken between x0 and x1, which is just down here. If I consider now the next value, which is the next mid-ordinate, we're going to have x3 over 2, or 1.5, and that would give me 5 over 2. And then finally, if I took this value right here, I'm going to say that this is x5 over 2, or 2.5. Two That's going to give me now 7 over 2. So, let's go ahead and look at this now on the curve. So what I'm going to do is take this point just here. This is going to be halfway between 1 and 2, or halfway between x0 and x1. I'm going to draw a little rectangle, and what we're going to consider is the height of this rectangle to be the value when we put now x of a half through this function. So let's just look at that. So this point right here is the mid-ordinate, and that's going to give me the height. So what I'm going to do is look at a rectangle. So if I take now a rectangle, we can see in this particular case, this length right here is going to be 1, as we split this up now into three strips. And the height that I'm going to have here will be the value when I substitute in x sub 1 half. So this is going to be now y sub 1 half, and that will be the height. So if we think about what that's going to be, that's going to be 1 plus 3 over 2 squared. 
So if I do that, that will give me 9 over 4 plus 1. So this height will be 13 over 4. So I now have an area of 13 over 4 as it's these two values multiplied. We can see as we build these up, some are going to give us a bit too much on one side and a bit too little on the other. So this time I'm going to build up my second rectangle. Now the second rectangle will look something like so, and as stated, this isn't massively accurate, but it will give us some idea now of what's going on. So let's go ahead and do that, and I'll just drop that down a touch, and we'll put now the mid-ordinate on. So this is the mid-ordinate, and that will be just there. So let's just change this rectangle very slightly. That will come here. This will go just there. And now we have an approximation to the area trapped under the curve. As we can see with the first one, we've got a bit too much there and a, li a little too less here. But over time, these will essentially even out to give a fairly good approximation. So there's my second rectangle. So if we think about the second rectangle now, let's go ahead. What we're going to have, again, we've got this length right here of 1 as it's between 2 and 3. So that is going to be 1. And this height right here is going to be whatever now we evaluate y of 3 over 2, or essentially x of 3 over 2, which will give us y sub 3 over 2. So this value right here is going to be 1 plus 5 over 2, which we need to square. So all I'm doing is essentially finding now the value from the original function. So that's going to give us 25 over 4, and then we're going to have plus 4 over 4, so this is 29 over 4. And that will give us now the area, 29 over 4 times by 1. So what we're doing is building these up. So let's go ahead now and do the next one. And the next one, just looking at this, as stated, these don't have to be massively accurate here, as it's just a rough idea of what's going on. So as soon as I put this one up, we'll go across, let's do that, and then we'll come down, and it'll look something like so. So roughly, give or take, that's what it's going to look like, probably slightly further to the right. Again, if we had a more accurate sketch, this would be better. So this time now, I've taken my value of x to be 3.5, or 7 over 2, as it's the mid-ordinate between 3 and 4. So if I do that, let's go ahead and draw a little rectangle. Again, this width right here is going to be 1. So let's put 1 on here, and we can put 1 just here. This is going to be y of 5 over 2. That is this height just here. So all we would do is sub in now the value that we've got. x sub 5 over 2 is 7 over 2, so we get 7 over 2, which we need to square and add to 1. So that's going to give me 49 over 4 plus 1, which is going to give me 53 over 4. 53 over 4 times 1, 53 over 4. So what we could do now is find an approximation to the area by splitting this up. This leads us directly into now the mid-ordinate rule. And what we can say in general for the mid-ordinate rule is that the integral now from A to B of Y, and we're integrating with respect to X, will be approximately equal to H, and we'll have now y sub 1 half plus y sub 3 over 2 plus y sub 5 over 2 plus dot 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 and then we'll have y sub n minus 1 half. Now h is given to be, and just writing this down here, h is equal to b minus a over n, where n is the number of strips. So let's look at this. Uh, look at it in this case right here. We've got b and a just here. So what we would do now is b minus a. So this would be 4 minus 1 over the number of strips. And I chose 3 strips. So that's going to give us 3 over 3, which is 1. So that gives us a value of h. Clearly that's not always going to be 1, but essentially we can see what we're doing. This is giving me the value here, and then we're just taking the mid-ordinates to build up these rectangles. So this now is the mid-ordinate rule. And as you can see, it's slightly more intuitive now than the trapezium rule, and certainly easier to implement. So this now gives us our mid-ordinate rule. What we're going to do is actually look now at applying this to a given function that I couldn't sketch. 
So let's look at a typical question that we might be asked. In part A it says use the mid-ordinate rule with four strips to find an estimate for the integral from 0 to 0 0.4 of cos of the square root of 3x plus 1 with respect to x giving our answer to three significant figures. OK, let's first consider now our formula. We can say that the approximate, and we'll write this down, we're going to get the approximate area, and we've got 0 to 0 0.4. We've got cos of the root now of 3x plus 1, and we're integrating with respect to x. So, in general, we can say that the trapeze, uh, the, sorry, the mid-ordinate rule, the mid-ordinate rule from a to b, and we'll have y dx will be approximately equal to h, then we'll have y sub 1 half plus y sub 3 over 2 plus dot dot dot, and then we'll have y sub n minus 1 half. So let's first consider now this right here. What I want to do is find h. Well, h will be equal to b minus a. So this will be 0 0.4 minus 0 over n, which is the number of strips. We're told that this is going to be 4, so I'm going to end up now with h being equal to 0 0.1. So at this stage, you can simply plug these in. What I like to do here is just draw a quick number line. You certainly don't have to, but it might make your life slightly easier. So what we've got here are four strips. So we've got now this one right here, and this is going to be 0. We'll have 1, we'll have 2, we'll have 3, and we'll have 4. So this will be 0 0.1. This length right here is 0 0.1. So we'll have 0 0.2, we'll have 0 0.3, and we'll have 0 0.4. So I split this up. This length right here, or this distance, is h. Now what I have here is x0, I have x1, I have x2, I have x3, and I have x4. What I'm interested now are in is the mid-ordinate, and this is x of a half. Now x of a half you can see is 0 0.05. If we consider now x sub 3 over 2, so x of 3 over 2, that is going to be just there, and that is going to be 0 0.15. If we now look at x sub 5 over 2, or 2 and a half, we're going to have this value right here, which is going to be 0 0.25. If we think about x, sev, uh, x sub 7 over 2, that's going to be this one just here, and that's going to be 0 0.35. So we now have the value of h, which is just here, and we have now our values of x sub half, x sub 3 over 2, x sub 5 over 2, and x sub 7 over 2. So what I can say at this stage is the following. This will be approximately equal to, and just matching this up, we're going to have 0 0.1, and then we'll multiply this now by the f, and I'm using this, evaluating the function as such, so we're going to have now 0 0.05, plus now f, and all I'm doing is taking these values here. We've got f of now 0 0.15, then we'll have plus f of 0 0.25, and then finally we'll have f, and just adding that on, f 0 0.35, and that will now give us our approximation. We're giving this now to three significant figures. So what I'm going to do is just work this out. Now what you could write here is the following. You could write that y of 1 half will be equal to cos, and it's entirely up to you on the notation, the cos of three lots now of 0 0.05 plus 1, which is going to give me 1.15. If we look now at y sub 3 over 2, that's going to give us cos, and we're going to have now three lots of this plus the 1, which is going to give me 1.45. So we'll have 1.45. And then we'll have y5 over 2, and we'll have the cos now of, and we're going to have three lots of this value plus 1, so that's going to give me now 1.75. Remember, this is all in radians, and then finally we'll have now, so we've got 3 over 2, 5 over 2, this will be 7 over 2, and we'll have three lots of this, so this will now be cos, and that will be 2.05. So all we need to do is evaluate these through a calculator and simply now multiply it by 0 0.1.
We're working it now to three significant figures. So in the calculator, making sure you're in radians mode, let's go ahead and do this. So shift mode four. So what we're going to have now in radians, we're going to have the cars now of the square root of 1.15. And that's going to give us a value now. Let's go ahead and do that. We got 0 0.47. Uh, 478, oh, so let's just put this in, 0 0.4780, dot, 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 dot. Now, in terms of the way that you deal with, this is entirely up to, what I'm going to do is store this in, shift, store, A. So that's in now as A. So if you wanted to just write it down, you could do, and you could truncate it, essentially, to ensure that you're giving your answer. I'm just going to plug them in as A, B, C, and D, and then put them in at the end. So what we're going to do now, if I change this one over, we're now going to have 4, 5. So if we do that one, what we've got then is 0 0.3584, uh, 0 0.358384, uh, dot, 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 and so on. And I'm going to store this in as B. So if we just saw that, shift, saw B, so that's in as B. So let's just put that in as B. And then we'll have the next one, which is going to be for 1.75. Uh, so 1.75, so let's go ahead and put that one in, and that's going to give me 24538, so 24538, dot, 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 and so on, and I'll store that one in as C. So shift, and then we're going to have store C, and that's in as C, so let's put that there. And then finally, we're going to have 2.05, so just putting this in the calculator. Uh, so let's do that one, 2.05, and that gives us now 0. Uh, 138 dot 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 and that gives me now D so let's go ahead and store that in so shift then we got to store D okay so all I need to do at this stage is simply go ahead and write the following we can say that this approximation is going to give us now 0 0.1 so we got 0 0.1 which is H then we're going to have essentially A plus B plus C plus D and we can do that so let's do that, and all I'm going to do is put this through. So 0.1, then we're going to have multiplied by A plus now B, and let's put that in, plus the C, and then plus the D, and then we give our answer correct now to the value that they give. So what we can say then is that this will be 0 0.122, and that now is given, they want this given now to three significant figures. So two, let's just write this here, two, three significant figures. And as stated, lots of different ways of doing that. As long as you're showing full worked answers, you might not want to store them. It's entirely up to you. But essentially what we're doing is finding H. Now, H is this distance right here. And we can do that by B minus A over N, where N is the number of strips. We've got x0, x1, x2, x3, and x4. We consider now the mid ordinates. We plug those in to get the corresponding y coordinates. And that's what this is showing right here. Don't have to do that. You can simply go straight ahead and do that. And then we're summing using the formula right here. It's relatively straightforward once you can now find these values. Entirely up to you on how you want to do it. Now, in part B, it says use the substitution u is equal to 3x plus 1 to find the exact value of the integral from 0 to 1. Now, of x, 3x plus 1 dx. Now, often what you'll get, this question isn't really 100% linked to such because we, we're evaluating now from different um, different values. These, this one's going from 0 to 1. This is going from 0 now to uh, 0 0.4. And we've got x here. What we might be given, though, is the following. It might ask us to go ahead and actually evaluate now an integral. So with this one, we could look at uh, using the analytical techniques and using the mid-ordinate rule and then comparing the difference between them, so the percentage error. And all we would look at now is the difference divided by the original times by 100. So this question isn't asking us to do that. But do expect in some particular questions to be given a function that you can integrate using the analytical techniques and then compare the difference between them. But as stated, this second part doesn't do that. But it's interesting if it does. So there we go. That's a brief introduction to the mid-ordinate rule and then a quick example of applying it for four marks.